Can you briefly introduce yourself? Okay, my name is uh, Persis Chemani. I'm the chief executive of Renwater. And uh, Renwater is a public entity in water based in South Africa. We're looking after um, over 12 million customers. And uh, as an organization, we have over 3,000 kilometers of uh, pipe network and about uh, 58 reservoirs and we've been in existence for about 110 years. 110? Yes. That's amazing. So that means that um, you also provide a lot of guidance also in the region to others um, who are looking to follow your example. Yes, in South Africa itself uh, we now have about uh, 12 water boats but I think there's a mm. consolidation process that uh, the ministry is looking at. But yes, based on our pedigree in terms of how long we've been in existence and the fact that we are really, um, uh, as opposed to other people, we've really been there even before some of the ministries were actually put together. So we do believe that we do have some influence in terms of direction, whether it's on standards on, or whether it's on policy making and all that. So we've been quite... Um, privilege for the department to be working closer with us in terms of determining these kind of things. So what would this partnership entail for you personally? Personally, um, I come from a view that, you know, you'd have formal education in terms of universities. But the problem with the water sector, with something like the water sector, is you'd, uh, universities, because they don't have um, the plants, so to speak, where people can go and do hands-on and have hands-on experience in terms of what needs to happen. You can only have the theory part of it. So some people would go and have formal education but they don't have the practical aspect of that. So what we like about this particular partnership is it creates uh, that kind of bridge and mm -hmm. that's why as an organization we decided we wanted to have an a water academy, mm -hmm. which is what we're doing as a water. But more importantly, it wasn't just looking at what we do as South Africa or as Renwater. Mm -hmm. It's more along the lines of saying, let's pitch ourselves against the best or at least make sure we work at that level. Because mm -hmm. you want to make sure that ultimately when you say this is a, a graduate or somebody that comes from this academy, mm -hmm. really they can operate at an international level and they have the right exposure. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many lessons and problems that you would pick up along the way that even in terms of lessons, in terms of what people get exposed to, we believe an organization like uh, the one that you guys work for is quite important because it uh, really pulls everything at an international level. And even the exposure is not only saying, you know, we're looking at Netherlands and mm -hmm. South Africa. The exposure and the fact that students come from all over is quite important for us in terms of that. So we're looking at really getting water specialists in the real sense of mm -hmm. the word. So for me personally, it's about... Um, getting into that space, creating that kind of environment where anybody from anywhere in the world, if they are part of this, these kind of programs, can actually benefit from it. And I think in terms of our communities, because we still have rural and urban communities out there, it would be of importance to really have the kind of people that can get into a new environment and be able to sort out water-related issues. And mm -hmm. there are a lot of challenges, I think. Can you just name a few? Um, you see, de depending on where you are, I mean, if I were to take South Africa as an example, mm -hmm. you'd have an urban areas, and uh, in our case, our history as well as, as meant that the kind of infrastructure you had in urban areas versus rural areas would be different. So you still have uh, small pockets of areas where people in the rural areas do not have the kind of quality water that you'd need. Mm -hmm. But I think we've been, as an African country, We've been quite uh, blessed to be able to still have people drinking tap water in certain mm -hmm. areas, but we want to make sure that you're not sitting in some area where people enjoy this kind of service, but if you go to other areas, people still have to go to the river and all that, and I mean, there's a lot of pollution in certain instances because you'd have uh, industries also polluting the water, so you need to look at it as a full value chain from a point of view of how you need to deal with these things. So what you're saying is we need to eliminate all these kind of things and still ensure that even in those poor areas, if you have enough skill sets in terms of people that, that get redeployed into those particular areas, because some of our programs, we work closely with National Treasury and with other government institutions to say, let's get a lot of people trained so that they can be redeployed into these areas. Because wow. other, other than that, people always try to migrate to the big cities and that puts a strain on your networks because now you have more people than what you've planned for. 
but then you don't have anybody in certain parts of the country. But mm. if you do this properly, you'll be able to really have a lot of people being uh, put in different areas and you won't have somebody that's in a rural area feeling, I'm not having quality water or this. So dealing with those kind of things mm -hmm. at another level quite helps. So you would also see benefits for UNESCO IC to be involved in this training people for this academy as well? Uh, I believe so. Uh, if you look at us, we have presence also in the continent, and I'm talking about the African continent, so to speak. And I know UNESCO is quite involved in quite a number of countries there. Mm -hmm. now, for now, if they have to have a presence in certain areas, they now need to have people coming from the Netherlands to go to those areas. But if we do this properly, which is some of the things that we're thinking, is firstly, there's a lot that they can learn because uh, you see, my view is there's still a lot of water-related challenges in a continent like ours, uh, which means that's where the issues are. And um, even for education or PhDs and things that have to be done from UNESCO society, the students would learn a lot in terms mm -hmm. of that. But again, you have what I would call indigenous solutions mm -hmm. because we have different problems uh, given where we come from. So I think uh, there's a lot that can be learned by UNESCO and there's a lot that can be learned by us as well. So the exchanges won't be just a one-sided thing. I think it will go both ways in terms of that. Because from our side as well, we think uh, we haven't done badly over the last 110 years. So we do have some knowledge that we think we can impart. So for me, I look at it that way. And I mean, with water being a mega nexus, everything revolves around water. There's always things that you can pick up that are in the water or looking at a different way of doing things or collectively because we also have our scientists as well mm -hmm. working together to try and sort out particular problems that are out there at an international level. So we look at it as a two-way street. We actually say for us it's more a partnership than anything in terms of being able to get information moving from one end of the world to the other. And Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.